Hi, good afternoon. This, this was built with people who put no effort into growing uh, when they were younger. Um, I've, previous years, I've always been angry about the ranters because they never rant. But this year's ranters, they've all got a bee in their bonnet, which is great. And I loved Lucas's because he used the word bogus twice. And I think we should all embrace the word bogus and just use it. And he used the word angry a lot. Love that word. Ang- I'm angry about this. And you can prefix anything with angry and it kind of makes whatever you're talking about a little bit better. Um, anyway, so the, they called me up and they said they want you to rant. And they said, what are you going to rant about? I said, how long have I got? And they said, five minutes. And I said, I did about 15 things then. So, drinks for kids without bits. Right, we've got orange juice, which is a derivative of orange, which has got bits in. But for kids, probably to get kids to eat it or drink it, we'll remove the bits. My son, youngest son, I won't mention his name, Max, he will only drink with uh, orange juice without bits. But he loves oranges. And without trying to encourage social services, I did hit him when he said that. And flavoured water for kids. There was an advert, are you having trouble getting your kid to drink water? Give them this, it's got a flavour in. No, if you're having trouble with your kid drinking water, sit them at a table and tell them they can't move until they've drunk it. Give them bloody flavoured water. I do a lot of food judging. We got presented with four yoghurts, four different fruits, all look like chocolate. Why do they look like chocolate? Because the kids wouldn't eat them if they looked like the fruit. I mean, a generation of culinary retardedness is waving towards us. A tsunami of why doesn't it look like chocolate? Tipping. Why would you tip in the UK? The service is predominantly shocking. I walked into a, a coffee shop in Hull in Chester the other day and, I, and the doors open, I walk in, there's a guy then he's got the big sexy Italian coffee machine and I'm getting excited and I'm salivating, I'm thinking, right, I'm going to have double shot, triple shot, double, sh- double shot. So I said, uh, double shot, black Americano, no milk. And he said, we're not open yet. And I went, ooh. I said, well, oh, what's that? He said, we're not open for another 15 minutes. I looked at the clock, quarter to nine, and I said to him, I said, sorry, I said, I feel such like a, such a fool. I said, who would want a coffee before nine o'clock? Burgers, right? In the States, they ask you how you want to get a burger cooked. In the UK, apart from Spice Cafe over there, it's the only burger in the UK that's cooked how you ask it to be cooked. I had a burger last night, shocking. It was like that. I forgot to ask how it came. I just assumed it was going to be cooked um, slightly rare. Caesar salads. Don't, chefs, no one gives a about your interpretation of things. If it says Caesar salad, give me a Caesar salad. I want croutons, I want anchovies, I want eggs. I don't want your bloody interpretation of what a bloody Caesar salad is. (laughs) Food is not complicated. Chefs, leave it alone. Went into a place the other day, we ordered two Sunday roasts, Beef Sunday roast, Yorkshire pudding, little bit of gravy, no problem. So I said to the lady, ah, oh, I said, I said, doesn't seem very much gravy with this. Can I have a little bit more? And she said, you know when they put their head on their shoulder as if you're the idiot? She went, um, the, the, the chef doesn't serve his, sun, his beef Sunday roast with gravy. He serves it with the jus. I mean, as, as soon as she said the word jus, it's so close to attacking her physically. <laughs> so I was like, right, okay, it's gravy. It's not jus. I said, well, with, could you ask the chef? We could have some more. Anyway, five minutes later, she comes back with a tiny little ceramic jug of jus. And um, she says, the chef has said, you can have this. So I said, well, you say to, from me to the chef, you know, F you very much. Um, I really feel important in his, hole, in his restaurant. And we had two Sunday roasts, and both Sunday roast plates went back empty, apart from one and a half Yorkshire puddings. What's the first thing that gets eaten on every beef, yo- uh, eat beef dinner? Yorkshire pudding. Can I have some more Yorkshire pudding? They both, both of them went back. Words that get used in our industry. Passion. Why are you in food? Oh, I have a passion. I have a passion. You know, I'd love for someone to say, why are you in food? Well, I don't know, just a bit indifferent to it, really, but the margin's quite good, so I thought I'd give it a crack. <laughs> foodie? Oh, yeah, I'm in food because I'm a food. We're all freaking foodies. We all like food. It doesn't make you different because you're a foodie. Just shut up about foodies. When you say you're a foodie, you don't sound like a foodie. You sound like an idiot. <laughs> Martinis! 
Who drinks martinis? The rest of you should be ashamed of yourself. Quarter to two, you need to get down to the chase bar, ask James for a martini. They are the best things ever. But a couple of tips, just drink one in a whole night. Trust me, if you want to know what drinking five is like, I have no idea. Um, and if, don't be embarrassed if when you, they put it in that stupid martini glass, they should really serve them in a small cup. Um, uh, to get it from the bar to your lips is difficult. If some of it's spilled, don't be embarrassed. My top tip is always ask them for a small straw, lean down onto the bar, a little sip from it with the bar. It's far less humiliating than spilling it down your front. Love a martini. Not over short. Got served a Gibson the other day. Had a pickled onion in the bottom of it, or a small onion. I was told it was a classic. It's horrible. Really horrible. But... You take you, and you can have it shit, and it looks like you know what you, it looks like you know about booze, but really it's quite a cheap way of getting pissed. Um, big plates in restaurants with small portions on. Ah! Foam. It looks like alien sick. It's not a culinary achievement. Just leave the foam alone. Um. What else did I write down here? Oh, long list of ingredients on menus. Oh, just, you know, just calm down. Just say what it is. It doesn't need to be this plus this plus this. Carefully selected meats. What? As opposed to, like, casually selected. You know, it's just these words that creep into our business. Barbecue. Who thinks the barbecue season's coming to an end? It's only just started. Why would you barbecue in the summer? It's warm, occasionally. And you sit in front, barbecue in the winter, trust me, it's the best thing ever. Get yourself outdoors, in the dark, barbecue in the dark. And guys, also, don't do that whole caveman thing with your barbecue. You know, you don't go into the kitchen for the whole year, but suddenly in the summer, step away from my barbecue. You don't know how to cook, you don't understand cross-examination. When it's burnt, it's not ready to be served. So guys, just say, do you know what, darling? Or to your significant other... You cook most of the year. I'm going to do what I do for the rest most of the year. I'm just going to drink quite heavily while you cook because you can. And guys, pouring beer on a barbecue, that's not a culinary achievement. Jeez. Again, still carrying on a theme from last year. Still quite intolerant towards people with food intolerances. And I'm not talking about... If any of you have got a, 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 a jab in your bag because you've got a proper intolerance, I'm talking about the people who've replaced the word I don't quite like it with I have got a food intolerance. Next time someone says to you, and also vegetarians that eat meat, you know, if it's got eyes, you're not a vegetarian. <laughs> and that includes bacon. Amount of vegetarians. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm completely veggie. It's the best thing I ever, ever did. But, you know, just can't give up bacon butties. Well, you're not a vegetarian. Twice baked, triple fried. Just do it right the first time. You know, just get it right the first time. Gastro pubs. Love them. You know, make you feel good, make you feel quite sort of middle class and sort of like you know what you're doing. But... Why have you got to go to the bar to place your meal order? So you charge restaurant prices and you're doing all the bleeding work. And there's a chain, I don't know whether you've got them in your part of the country, there's a chain up near us, they give us those wooden spoons with a number on. And you can only place a number if you've got your wooden bloody spoon. And you can only place it with a certain person. And you can't place your order for food when you place your order for drinks. You know, it's not a gastro pub, it's just in a big annoying playhouse. Parmesan dust. I go into Italian restaurants with my super fancy Italian friend, Mark Garcia, who's properly off of Italy. Now, when he says, uh, they say, would you like Parmesan? I swear to God, the restaurant I've been in for years, that's always bought me dust, arrives with a silver grater and a sodding great big parm. I'm like, what? WTF? What's this all about? When the next time you're in an Italian restaurant and they say, would you like Parmesan with that? Say, yes, but not the dust. Ask for it. <laughs>